Does anyone tell you that you make really good cookies? If they have, and if you want to make it a business, then you should definitely watch this video. Because in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the step-by-step -step process in creating your home bakery. So then that way, you can actually create something of your passion. Make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you enjoy videos that teaches you on how you can build your own dream restaurant, your dream business, then make sure you guys smash the like button that shows me this is the type of content you enjoy and we will create more of this for you. So go ahead and smash that like button right now. You might be like a lot of people out there that you bake some very good cookies, make some very good food that your coworkers, your family, your spouse tells you how great you are, tells you that there's nothing on the market that matches what you sell and that you should start your own bakery. But the problem is that you just don't have the confidence to take that plunge to start your very own full-fledged bakery. Or you just don't know where to start. And these are the common obstacles that I see a lot of great home bakers have. And that's the reason why you have to watch this video because I'm sharing with you the step-by-step -step process in creating your own home bakery business from scratch. Let's dive right in. First question, can I start the business at home? Yes, you can. Go and look out cottage food laws. The cottage food laws indicates what type of food you can sell, where you can sell these food, and the maximum threshold of how much you can make before triggering the laws out there. So that's the reason why, in short, you can sell food at home. Now as a big, 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 big disclaimer, you must do the research in your own city, within different cities different provinces, they have different cottage food laws laws that is applicable. So definitely what you want to do is to go on Google, type in your city, type in cottage food laws, and you're going to be able to see the different regulations and the different items that you should be aware of. Another disclaimer with you is that I often see a lot of people, they completely ignore the cottage food laws as well, and they just start selling food from the comfort of their own home. Why are they doing that? Well, you know what? They're doing it because they're just starting out and they want to test whether there is a demand for their product. And once again, I'm not promoting this, but I'm sharing with you what I see people do. And once they have proven there's a demand for their product, they would go out and rent a ghost kitchen so then that way they can have the proper protocols to move ahead. Once again, I'm not promoting this. I'm just sharing what I know in the space with you. And the second step is to figure out your target market. So many times we create food that we enjoy and we just throw it out there, hope for the best, but that's not how food business works. That's not how any types of business work. We must identify a problem and we are providing a solution with our food item to that problem. That's what we're doing. Our food business is a solution to someone else's problem. And oftentimes we scratch our own itch. We create a solution to a problem that we have. As an example, let's say I'm vegan and I love sweet food. So that's the reason why I'm out on a hunt for some very delicious vegan cookies, but then I can't find any. And that's the reason why I go in my kitchen and I start creating these very delicious yet healthy vegan cookies. Now, because you made a ton of vegan cookies, you share it with your friends and family, and it just so happens your friend is also vegan and also loves sweet cookies. Now you have identified a problem in the marketplace and you have provided a solution. That's what we want to do. And that's how you identify your target market by providing a solution to someone's problem. And it is essential. I repeat, it is essential for you to identify your target market because it influences everything that you do, everything from your branding to your messaging, to your designs, to the product that you make, to the pricing, all of this plays into the role of who it is that you're trying to serve. And we need to make our judgment and profile these target market. Where do they live? What do they do? What is their medium income? What do they enjoy doing on their off times? By us identifying everything about this target market, what can we do? Now we can make educated decisions on the pricing, marketing, and the product selection as well. This is why target market is super important. The third step is to check for demand. 
Remember I was saying, hey, you know what? You make some really good cookies and your friend loves it as well. Doesn't mean there's a business there. We must check whether there is a demand for that product. So why is it super important to check for demand as well? Well, you don't want to sell food only tailored to you and your friend or selling food that you yourself enjoy, making assumptions on what the market is wanting. We don't want to do that. We must be able to position ourselves to create food that a lot of people are wanting and that we can make, that we can provide the solution to as well. That's how you get people to buy from you. That's how you are going to have a booming business. So how do you know if your product is popular, is in demand? Well, first of all, check Instagram. Check Pinterest. These are the two big, biggest platforms out there that shows you what is in trend, what is people demanding. Now that you have a big overall idea of whether it has demand or not, then start surveying people that you assume are your target market. As the same example, let's say you really want to be able to build your vegan cookie business and sell online. What are you going to do? Find online vegan communities or in-person communities and start surveying them. Ask them what flavor they want, what texture they're looking for, what price are they willing to pay, what do they hate about your vegan cookies, what other flavors do they want from you. This gives you so much insight of how you can create this business specifically catered to your target market. And if you're stuck trying to validate your market, trying to figure out whether it's demand product for your item, or if you just want to learn how you can build a proper and profitable food business, then definitely check out our free masterclass in the link below where I share with you how you can turn your food idea into a profitable food business in less than 60 days. Definitely check it out in the link below. Fourth step is to engineer your menu. Now you've figured out there's demand. Now you've figured out the target market. Now it is time for you to create your menu. Now before diving into the complication of menu engineering. To start off, start with two to three products. Figure out what your hero product is that everyone loves and have two or three different variations, whether it's an alternative or a complementary item for in support of your hero item. The reason why is because we do not want to mess up our operations. We don't want to buy 10 different ingredients just to make 10 different flavors when we're only selling one item. We don't want that. We want to simplify the process and we want to make this as easy as possible for us to grow a solid brand before we get into the complicated things. Some other options for you to consider is the average order value. Let's say if you're selling vegan cookies again, you wouldn't want to sell one cookie for $3. And that's the reason why you must consider the quantities that you're offering, whether selling it as a gift box of six of 12 or 18, that would bring your average order value up and that allows you for every order that comes through, makes it more worthwhile for you to actually do the work. Two things that you must consider when deciding your menu offering. First of all, it is operations, operations, operations. It's super important and a lot of people neglect this because once again, they offer tons of variations, tons of different flavors with more variations, more flavors, more ingredients, more ingredients, more cost. We don't want that. We want to do things right and have one hero product done very well. And the second thing is trial and error. When we're doing our menu engineering, it is all about trial and error. It is all about figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And we must always have our ears open, willing to listen to constructive feedback. If people are telling you that the size is too small, if people are telling you the taste is not that good, don't take it to heart. Take it as constructive criticism. Improve upon that. That's how you can improve and create a product that people will love. The fifth part is the fun stuff. It is to start your branding. This is where all the fun stuff begins, okay? We have done all the legwork already. Now it is time to choose a name that fits into your personality, a brand that fits into what you're trying to build. Whether it's vegan cookies, then you can call yourself vegan monsters. Have fun with this process. Use namecheck.com for you to see whether your name is taken on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Choose a name that you can actually create a handle with. So then that way, you're not gonna have the trouble of going through multiple different accounts, trying to figure out whether the domain, the name, the handle is taken by other people. 
After you grabbed all your handles from Instagram, TikTok, all the good stuff, it is time to create your logo. If you don't have an in-house designer or a friend that is doing design, then go online to find a designer. Super convenient nowadays. These are the two websites that we utilize all the time. One is Fiverr.com, one is Upwork.com. Put your posting out to find your designer to create your logo for you. Next up is to set up your website and online shop. How do you do that? I recommend using Square because it's easy to use and it's super user friendly even for your physical store if you have a POS system or if you just want to create a website, their store creator is also super simple to use. And best of all, their system is on a tiered level system. That means no monthly fee and you can actually subscribe as your volume increases. And if you guys are interested, then definitely check out Square in the link below. They're not a sponsor of this video. However, I do get a small commission from this if you use them. And I only recommend you using them because I love it. I myself use it. And the commission that I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna create more of these videos for you. So definitely, if you guys are wanting to create a website and looking for a shop, then definitely check it out in the link below. And the biggest takeaway with branding, guys, is really how you make other people feel, okay? And how you make people feel is not just by the first impression. It is by multiple different occasions, just like people interacting with your brand. When they land on your website, when they go on your Instagram, when they go on the review sites, you need to be cohesive with the branding on all these fronts. So then that way you come across as a certain image. And that's the reason why branding is so important. And it is also very much mistaken by a lot of people because they just think it's a logo. No, it's about the collective of everything that you have online. So make sure you guys pay attention to this. And guys, if you guys find any value whatsoever with the video so far, make sure you guys support us by hitting that like button. That's the only thing I ask for. Hit that like button so we know this is the content you enjoy, so we make more of these for you. Go ahead, smash the like button. Let's carry on. Next step is to create a marketing plan. Super important, guys. Now that you figured out your target market, you figured out your product, you figured out who and where you're selling it to, the branding, everything is done. How are you gonna get the word out there? Be intentful with this, guys. Be strategical with this. Have a plan right from the get-go and don't just wing it. The last thing we want to do is just continue to run in this rat circle. Rat circle is just go around and around and around thinking we're making progress, taking what other people are doing and not being strategical with it. Seeing what this works, bring it into our place. Seeing this works, bring it into our place. And really, at the end of the day, we're just running in circles with no progress. Whereas if you have a plan right from the get-go, a timeline, you are able to set yourself up for a certain standard. Now you can work with purpose and you're gonna be able to see progress as you move forward. Three main channels that I'd like you to focus on initially for your marketing plan. First of all, it is word of mouth. It is what people say about your brand. Oftentimes, what other people have to say about you carries so much more weight than what you have to say about yourself. That's the reason why word of mouth marketing is always the number one choice. And on top of that, it is completely free to do so. How do you do that? Engage with your community, listen to the feedback, talk to them, figure out what is it that they're wanting, what is it that they do not enjoy? So then that way you can make the improvements. And when they see that you care about your business, when they see that you're passionate about your business, then they're gonna refer you, recommend you to other people that would love your product as well. Second marketing tactic is to utilize digital trends and platforms. Now I talked about this a little bit earlier, but let's dive in a little bit deeper. First of all, your website. When you're utilizing your website, it must be mobile responsive. What does that mean? That means that your website would appear beautifully on your phone because more than 50% of the people that visit your site, they are using the cell phone. So make sure your website is mobile responsive. On top of that, your website, we need to capture people's attention and we need to capture people's info. Therefore, have a pop-up to capture people's info. Give them a deal, give them 10% off in exchange for you to capture their email. After you capture their email, what are you gonna do with it? Email marketing. Talk to your customers on a monthly basis, weekly basis, whatever the cadence that you can actually do consistently, guys. Make sure you develop this relationship, communicate with them back and forth, back and forth. This 
is how you can grow a loyal fan base. Now, I talked a lot about website. Definitely, if you guys haven't, check out Square. That's how you can create the mobile website and on top of that, allows you to capture people's emails. Next up is for you to utilize social media platforms. Two biggest ones that you should look into right now, Instagram and TikTok. Their reach is just unbelievable as long as you're consistent and as long as you create good content, your stuff will be spread out and will be found. So make sure you guys definitely check out these two platforms. This allows your brand to be discovered so more people can come and purchase from you. Third marketing strategy is for you to obsess with your UGC. What is UGC? User generated content. Whether it's people enjoying your meal, enjoying your food, whether it's people sharing hashtags of your product, whether it's people leaving a review, these are all user generated content. According to a study, more than 45% of the people, they would actually check your reviews on review sites like Yelp before deciding whether to purchase from you or not. This just shows how important these UGC really are and why you should really pay attention to them. So what does that mean? A lot of us, we have tons of people talking about us, but we don't know and we don't utilize it well enough. How do we do it? Plant these UGC on your website. Share it with people through email. Put it on your social media. Do not overlook how important these assets are for your brand. So the big question really is, how do you get UGC? How do you get these proof? Well, make sure you ask. If you don't ask, you'll never get, and that's the reason why I always ask you to smash the like button because it actually statistically is proven that if I ask and when I ask, you're actually gonna be more, much more likely to smash that like button. So go ahead, smash that like button, and go ahead and ask your customers for reviews. Ask your customers to take pictures and share it online, to put hashtags so you can actually retrieve and see what people are posting online, capture it and then for you to republish it on your own platforms. That's how we can encourage people to gather UGC. More advanced ways of gathering UGC, work with influencers, do collaborations, reach out to different publications, so then that way you can utilize all these assets as UGC for your own home bakery. There you go, friends. Last step is to put it all, put this whole crazy thing into a business plan. I just shared with you the roadmap for you to create your own home bakery. What do you do now? You package it in a business plan. So then that way you can show it to investors, your partners, and it also is a great outline for yourself to execute. Now you bring this business plan to go and raise funds. Now you go and find your dream partner. Now you can do this at ease. And the most important thing about business plan guys is not just finding the right partners. It's not just raising funds. It is really to allow you to have clarity in your business. It is for you to leave no stones unturned. It is for you to have this thought exercise to consider things that you might just not think about before. Whether it's your finances, whether it's the marketing plan, whether it's the location, whether it is your product or who it is that you're serving. All these things comes into play when building a business. Yes, it's a lot, but following this video, you're gonna be able to actually put all these things together and make this process a lot simpler. So go ahead, rewatch this video, save this video as your resource as you're building out your business plan. Now I went through a lot of things in this short period of time and there's no way I can cover everything with you in detail. But if you're serious about building your own home bakery business and if you don't know where to start and if you want more in-depth training on how you can turn your food idea into a profitable food business, then I invite you to join our free masterclass in the link below. This is over an hour long of free content for you, of nuggets on how you can actually do something and turn your passion into a business that you're gonna be proud of. Definitely check it out in the link below and I will see you guys in the training. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. We put in a lot of effort to create this for you because we want you to be successful. We want you to create something that you truly are proud of owning. And I'm there, there for you. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video.